but I'm Stephen. I'm wondering, having seen Edumook, which uh, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems to have kind of fizzled a bit, uh, and all these new Google Plus things. What's your latest thinking on how to make change happen? Yeah, if you're running a MOOC, do it sometime other than when Google Plus launches. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that seems like a nice little synergy that could have helped the MOOC. I don't. I don't see that necessarily as a either or. Yeah, uh, they set up the MOOC, and I think they set it up the two major things. With first of all the online um, online panel discussions, which were a really good idea, but my experience, anyways, has been they're really hard to find and to get to. Um, and participate in. Participate. Well, I don't think you can participate in them. Um, I, I have trouble just getting to them. I yet to figure out how to participate in them. So that's one thing, right? And so, and then the other thing is that they have supporting this is the, um, the Moodle forums. And Moodle forums always die after a couple of weeks. Always, always, always. Um, and there's a bunch of reasons for that. You have to log in. Uh, especially if you set up a new forum for each week, if you don't automatically subscribe, you don't see the new forum, so you don't know that there's a new conversation happening. People run out of things to say after they said, hi, I'm so-and-so from such-and-such. So, you know, you always have this huge, long, red... Oh, I didn't... Oh, I see what's happening there. Um, so, and we discovered this with the CCK MOOCs as well, that... Uh, the forums die. And there's nothing in EduMOOC that I have found yet that duplicates the role of Grasshopper to aggregate what's happening in the various places. And, and well, what's your thumbnail sketch of what is Grasshopper? Grasshopper is a very simple application that does some complicated things. Basically, it aggregates or brings together resources from various places across the web, merges them together, puts them into a database, and then helps me send out a daily newsletter summarizing all the different things that have happened all over the internet related to the course. And they don't have that. So there's, I was just looking today, I, th I think it's your page, isn't it, Jeff? The, uh, the... edumook2011.blogspot? Uh, well, no, I'm not sure what the URL is, but it's the uh, the uh, the mucosphere. Yeah, edge mucosphere. Yeah. Yeah, the edge mucosphere, which is really good. There's all kinds of stuff happening all over the place. Um, although, you know, it's sort of like you know, they, they start off together and then they sort of spread out and spread out and spread out, and there's nothing to bring them back together. So they they spread out and they dissipate, and you can sort of tail them off. But the whole idea of grasshoppers to undissipate, to bring it. So, so the change MOOC is going to happen. People are going to blog and they're going to tweet and they're going to do, they're going to Google Plus. And Grasshopper is going to aggregate all this and toss it out as a what? Well, first of all, as a newsletter, email newsletter. You sign up for the email newsletter, you'll get a new email every day with the latest and greatest in the course. Uh, all the course in the Just the latest, or is it going to be filtered for the greatest? Because um, that's an issue, too, is the filtering. It, it won't be filtered much. Uh, the way I filter is I have too much stuff. I give, the, I give it less space. So, like, for example, I aggregate the Twitter post. Well, that's a lot of stuff. But I give each Twitter post like one or two lines in the newsletter. So I get a lot of stuff in a fairly short area. Same with blog posts. Right? I've got a whole pile of blog posts or discussion posts or whatever. I'll just play the title with a link. Uh, but if I have fewer, I can, I can give them a thousand word description. And it's, it's totally based on quantity. I'm not sorting for the best. Uh, it's Steven, have you looked at crowdsourcing that? Do you have any voting systems or something like that? No voting systems. Um, I don't know if I want voting systems. I wouldn't prevent someone else from setting up a voting system. 
Uh, right now, the main challenge is just bringing it together. Um, but you, you know, uh, I, I'm, you know, I won't lie. I mean, I've thought of these sorts of things in the past. It wouldn't be hard to add a voting system to Grasshopper because it's just put a simple link in the in the outgoing email newsletter. People click on the link and it records a vote uh, for their identity against the resource that they're voting on. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. It just hasn't been high on my list of priorities. Ranking things isn't high on my list of priorities generally, um, especially if you're not going to use the ranking to show some stuff and hide other stuff. But I mean, these, this plus one thing has utility. You know, if if you've got all this content happening in a MOOC, and the stuff that people find most interesting, they're plus oneing. What are you going to? First of all, that's what I think. But what are you going to use for the main web interface for the course? I don't know yet. Really? Uh, well, Grasshopper, we might have. But that's an email newsletter. Well, but it's also a website. That's, that's just it. Grasshopper, it produces the email newsletter, it produces a website, it produces the RSS feed, uh, it produces the podcast. If I get it done right, it will produce a course calendar uh, because we've been scheduling all the events manually in the past and made mistakes with that in the last uh, Connectivism course. Grasshopper has always had event items, we just haven't been using them. Um, so it produces the course calendar. Um, it produces the course bibliography. Now, an example of this site would be Downs.ca. Yeah. Okay. Are there yeah. other examples? Downs.ca runs on Grasshopper. The Grasshopper link that you put in there, um, grsshopper.downs.ca, runs on Grasshopper. Um, connect. Dot downs dot CA, uh, is the last course. I, I forget what's on there now. I actually used that in spite for two or three courses, but I really shouldn't. Oh, we're boring Mike. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is Plank, is, is on the uh, Connect site. So here's that's that's Plank. And then, oh yeah, cck11.mooc.ca. Um, how big was that? How, how many people were involved? In CCK11? Yeah. Top, just over a thousand. I guess like it was a thousand and twenty-three or something like that. And at that scale, did things get confusing or uh, more? No. More, more focused. China, Google. Well, collectivist courses never get focused. I mean, if if you've achieved focus in a connectivist course, you've probably done it wrong. <laughs> there isn't any kind of a, a, a snowballing effect that uh, you know a topic becomes so hot everybody wants to be part of it. No, it's more of a blizzard effect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And, and that's how it's designed, right? And everybody has their own different perspective. Even if there were one topic that everybody's on about, everybody would be on about it in a different way. Okay. And that's what trying to encourage, uh, you know, and that, that's how we approach the largish topic that defines the content of the course, anyways, right? Everybody approaches it in their own way, from their own perspective, with their own tools their own ideas, their own connections, their own contacts, uh, and then they present that perspective. And that perspective is what goes into the mix, becomes part of the blizzard, and then becomes part of other people's perspectives. Hey, Stephen, I'm curious with the MOOCs, what um, tool or what's caused people to stick around through the whole MOOC? Or have you figured that part out? The newsletter. No question. Uh -oh surveys. Uh, we've done more than one survey. By, by two to one, three to one, five to one margins, the tool that people find the most useful in the course is the daily newsletter. So it blows away everything else. So it's a daily communication. Hmm. Now I'm looking at the Plank 
uh, Mook, and the discussion in the wiki look, or the discussion is Moodle, yes? Are you planning on using that again? Yeah, the, in Plank we had a Moodle set up, in, uh, and that was um, 2010. In CCK11 we did not use a Moodle at all, and my estimation is that it was more successful without the Moodle. What did you use for discussion? People use their own blogs. Uh, some people set up a Google, uh, Google, what you mean, your groups area. Um, what else did they? There was a bunch of things that people did, but mo oh, a lot of people Twitter. Twitter was really big in CCK eleven. And what's the plan for the live sessions? <laughs> we don't know yet. Uh, Illuminate doesn't like us anymore. Blackboard <laughs> really? They've re they've rejected you too? Wow. Yes, yes, they rejected us. We are no longer welcome in Illuminate world. How did how did how did they communicate that to you? I don't know. They communicated it to George. Oh. Just running Illuminate on his site, and mm. uh, so I don't know exactly what they said. But George came back to me saying, you know, "Illuminate doesn't like us anymore." Um, I've got. Hmm. Sorry about that. I've got a test installation of Big Blue Button on the go right now. Uh, it's not up and running yet, but I hope to have it up and running by the time the uh, course starts. So that's one thing we might explore. Um, if that doesn't work, I don't know what I'll use. We'll find something. You can always hang out. You can always hang out. The Hangouts are okay. Um, I, I have noticed that people during the course, also for the first time with CCK11, I used Ed Radio. Actually, I used DS106 Radio until I ran into scheduling problems, and then I used Ed Radio. And that always did have a pretty good following during the course. People really liked that because it's pretty low tech, and even better, it's low bandwidth. So, you know, it's only coming in at 64k per second, uh, you know, which is almost like old telephone grade modem. It's just a little bit more than that. Uh, you, you might remember the uh, the 14.4 and then the 6. And I forget what the next one up from that was, but that it's it's that realm of band. 28. 28. Yeah, it was 28.8. What was after 28.8? 64, wasn't it? 64k. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're if you're using a you know dial up now, you're probably using a 64k modem, and that's the uh, the bandwidth that Ed Radio goes out on. So mm -hmm. people with these dial up connections can listen to Ed Radio, and my best uh, best information is that it works just fine. They can't do things like Illuminate, so you know I, that doesn't replace. Con System, but it allows us to extend the reach of the conferencing system. Stephen and the other MOOCs, were you able to pull out any demographics? Like, did you see if there were more males that were involved than females or anything like that? There was a, a research group attached to the CCK MOOC. They published a bunch of papers, um, mm. demographics. Um, the, the main thing, the main point of interest about the demographics was it was an older crowd. Huh. So, uh, but I, I don't, I didn't recall, I don't recall anything uh, as far as male-female ratio goes being significant. Uh, it was pretty worldwide. I really liked, um, although, you know, with an emphasis on the English-speaking countries, which is not surprising because it was in English. Um, my own recollection in the first MOOC, a08, we had a very strong Spanish language component. Uh, they ended up building three separate Spanish-speaking areas in Second Life, for example, which was kind of interesting. Um, in CCK11, the biggest subgroup that I noticed, and this is just me noticing, this is not me taking, you know, taking down numbers, uh, was the German, uh, German-speaking group which I found kind of interesting. I don't know how that happened, but it did. But now, uh, this change MOOC is probably going to be the longest MOOC in history. 
What was the thinking behind making it so... How long is it? Well, it, it's... I don't know. Um, like that. <laughs> 83 weeks or something? It's long. The thinking there are two things. Um, part of it was this change move is the least like a course we've ever done. And each week is almost self-contained. And, and mm. we're re we really want to push it that way. Because each week we're featuring a different person from the world of educational technology. And what we're asking them to do is bring your best work to the table. Bring your, your, your main contribution to the field to the table. Present that, and we'll talk about that. And the purpose of this change MOOC is to create a publication, uh, you know, a publication of record with all of these contributions, with contributions from the MOOC people as well, adding to that, and then distribute that. It'll be, you know, if you want to know what the state of educational technology is in 2012, you will need this book. Um, so. You know, you, you can't just pick 10 or 15 people to do this. I mean, there's a lot of people. We, we could have could have done twice the number of people, and I'm still pushing for a second segment uh, to change uh, dot, dot, uh, CA to actually include the rest of them. We're still weak internationally. We're still weak on K-12. We're a little bit weak in corporate uh, learning. So there's a lot more we can bring to the table and, and add a second volume to this state of the art book on uh, ed, ed tech. So that that was the thinking, and I think it's good thinking. And I think because it's new every week that we'll be able to maintain the interest. That it won't be the the whole we all get together and introduce ourselves in week one and then go away. Uh, there will be Sort of a steady, uh, you know, a steady refreshing of interest. That's the whole. Thing. And that, I, I think, you know, I'm mean, look at that spike. We we'll look at that spike, and then we'll tail off, and it'll level out, and it'll level out probably, I don't know, in the hundred. Who knows? Uh, I'm sorry, Steve. I just want to acknowledge Nelly and say hello. And yes, this is live. We are actually here. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. That's not what I meant. I know you're alive. I mean, you're alive. But no, I was, you know, I'm really annoyed. I get this, I get this message from someone, I don't know where. I'm at a conference, so I'm in the middle of something anyway. So, I, you know, I go into my computer and I get this message. Are you coming to the live session? So I thought there was a live session for oh, the yeah, EduMOOC. Oh, me on Facebook. So, Oh, it was you, right, exactly. So I ran over there. I didn't know when you posted your uh, message. So I ran over there, and I'm listening to this. Turns out that it's a recording. It's not even live. I mean, you know, what's the point of having a live session if you don't see anyone, you don't have, you know, chat box, you don't, you know, it's like, what is that? You know, they could have created that last year, right? You know, recorded last year. So what are we doing here? So I know this is live, and I really appreciate that. You know, I can touch you guys, right? You You're alive. Thing going on right now. Is that it? Stephen, you're coming in kind of low again. I'm Nelly, sorry. Nelly, you ought to write that up as a blog post or something. That's a great story. <laughs> I wrote about blogs, too. I think they're kind of, you know, young people don't write blogs as much as, you know, we do for some reason. I wonder why. They're Too much work. They're, they're on Facebook. What do you mean? Why make a blog when you can just do a you know a, a status update on your Facebook page? Seven hours a day are the latest statistics. Yeah. Well, so how many of you are writing blogs? I do. Occasionally. I'm supposed to be. I publish audio and video. Text isn't my thing. <laughs> hey, it's a multimedia world. 
but I like text. I've always liked text. I'll probably keep typing text until I can't. So how do you produce the oil daily? Like, do you just, when you come across something in the middle of the day, you write up your paragraph about it, it gets posted, and then however many of those things you've posted get sent out as the oil daily? That's it exactly. I, I do have a system now. I put it in last year because I was like, tapping for a month um, where I can schedule posts for dates in the future. But I don't use it that often. I only use it when I know I'm not going to be around. But generally, yeah, I, I have my RSS feed and my email and now my Google Plus and whatever else where I scan. I'm always scanning. So did you just say you're able to predict the future? Well, like for example, in August I'll be camping. I'm predicting the future there. Uh -huh. <laughs> is the oil daily part of your day job? I mean, is that what Canada's paying you to do? Or that's just something you do as part of how you spend your day? Canada's paying for part of it. And, and we need to be clear about that. I was doing oil daily before I started with this job. And when I came on to this job, one of the conditions was I get doing the web stuff that I have been doing. And over the years, they've tried to change the conditions. Um, when I originally came on, they said, oh, yeah, we love, we love this. We want you to do this. We'll host it on our servers. It'll be even better. Um, so, Oh, well, Daily actually did go on NRC servers, and that lasted until about 2006. 2005, 2006, and uh, of course, you know, when you work in government, if anyone disagrees with anything you do anywhere, they call your supervisor and, and complain. So I got a few calls from supervisor that were complaints, and, and really stupid things, like incredibly stupid. No, no, you, you'd think with all the political stuff that I do, it'd be like, you know, I said the wrong thing. The thing that the straw, the last straw was a complaint came in. Uh, there was this woman who had this ed tech company out of Vancouver. And my site showed up higher on Google than her site did when somebody did a search for her site name. I forget what it was. Wingnut or whatever, right? So if you search Wingnut, you get my site and then Wingnut.org. So she complained and asked my managers to have me lower my search engine ranking. <laughs> sad, wow. Lower your search was, engine ranking. Wow. The sad part was I was given a directive from my director. Uh, <laughs> No, Director General, uh, to lower my search engine ranking because I was taking this person's place in the search and illicitly taking this person's place. So I, I sent back an email explaining how Google was a site separate from me, that I didn't have any control. <laughs> but that was the last straw. And there, there had been a few complaints of that ilk. I mean, they were all like, ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I have a question for you, Stephen, but I want to quickly address a couple tech things. Um, Nelly, we discussed Stephen's camera earlier, and I will toss the specifications in the show notes for this. And I knew that dog noise was coming from Mike, because if you mouse over someone in a Google Hangout, you can see the volume meter movement in their little green icon mic. Uh, and to anyone I have muted because of whatever reasons, basically I'm an audio nag. Uh, please feel free to unmute yourself at any time to chime in. Uh, so, Stephen, how are you getting along with Canada these days? Like, do they ever say, you know, we want you to go more in this direction, or do they just kind of leave you alone and you sign on year by year? Canada these days would like to exert very firm directions on exactly what I do, who I work with, and what I research, but they don't know what those directions are. <laughs> I'm serious. So 
over the summer I've sort of had this period. I, I spent the last couple of years working on a project and at the end of the project they said we want the website taken down and you're not allowed to communicate the results of this project to anyone. So there is a project that I've been working on for the last two years which actually has some results and I can't talk about it. Uh, although if anybody looks at you know websites that I may have put up and they're no longer available uh, you, you could probably figure P the uh, L uh, what the project E was. <laughs> so okay. So there's that. But over the summer, I sort of have this space where they're trying to exert this complete control, but they seriously haven't decided what they want to do, and they haven't included me. That they know they want to do a big e-learning project, and they included me in the planning of it. So, who is they? My managers. Which part of the Canadian government is that? National Research Council. Okay. So I don't know what'll happen in the fall. So over the summer, I've just been messing around with Grasshopper, which I actually did get them to allow me to distribute as open source. Yay! So I have something I can work on, something that's approved, something that will have impact, and uh, I was sort of tricked into asking for permission to do the MOOC course this fall. I didn't ask for permission, but I was asked to write an email describing it, so I did, and it was submitted as a request on my behalf. So I have permission to do that, so that's good. <laughs> but it doesn't sound like can Canada's being real progressive about embracing open content and the like. No. Um, there is... Well, NRC has a, an initiative called NPARC, which is open access to all the research uh, publications. Uh, let me see if I can't find the URL for that. Uh, yeah, there it is. First on the Google list. How about that? So I'll just toss it in here. And so that's, that's all the publications for all the NRC researchers open access. Now, all rights are reserved, right? So there's no Creative Commons in our government uh, or no anything like Creative Commons. But at least you can access the stuff. And it's kind of a partial record in here of my own publications. It's not the full list. Uh, you know, we don't have the most efficient process of getting them up. But... The project at least exists. So, and you know, I think there's there's a recognition that there does need to be more openness and does need to more disclosure. If you you look at the government websites; they all have this thing called proactive disclosure. And uh, well, except I'm looking at the NRC site and I don't see it, uh, but maybe on the home page it'll be there. Uh, yeah, there it is. They have proactive disclosure. And so they, they do things like they uh, disclose contracts, they disclose travel and hospitality expenses, they dis disclose grants and contributions. Every department has one of these in the federal government. Uh, and that, that came in just recently, like the last few years. It, it's a good thing. So it's slow, but it's kind So of if, if we publish this video, uh, you're not going to get in any trouble, are you? No. Or, or any more trouble than you're already in? No, no, no. It's, it's one of these things people think the news media is much more influential than it is, right? They would actually have to be watching this video or somebody would have to be watching this video who would, who would have some reason to complain that I said something and then would need to figure out what it was that I said that is, the odds of it are just in, forget it. Uh, there's not going to be any trouble. They, they, they have not and they cannot clamp down on freedom of speech, right? So, uh, and the only, the only time I, well, there's two ways I can get into trouble. One way to get into trouble is to talk specifically about the position, the work that we're doing, etc., in derogatory ways or in ways that disclose IP. Right. That, that would get me into trouble. That would be, very slowly get me into trouble. That would get me into trouble if 
if it came up in a court case down the line somewhere. Uh, the other way I can get into trouble, and this would happen really quickly, would be if I became overtly political, uh, said how much I love or hate some political party, uh, while using NRC facilities. Don't the distinction. On my half an hour blog, which I work on at home on equipment that's completely owned by me, and I've been very careful to make sure I have my own computer, I pay for my own internet access, etc. So there's no government support for this. On that, I can say what party I support, etc. And I can make political statements. Uh, but I can't use any government equipment or time or services to indicate support for a political party. Does that apply to hockey as well? No, no. <laughs> go Senators, go. <laughs> hockey is fine. Um, so, and that makes sense, right? You don't want your civil servants using their office to campaign for a political party. They can campaign all they want, but they got to do it on their own time, with their own money. Of course, totally makes sense. So when I'm at home using my own equipment, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be a lot more overtly political. OL Daily, you'll notice, doesn't campaign overtly politically, but half an hour sometimes does. And, and therein lies the difference, because I'm allowed to declare some of the time I work on OL Daily on NRC. All the expenses for OL Daily I pay for myself. I, I pay for the server myself, for example. Um, and well, I, I'll do, I'll use, if I'm in the office, I'll use government equipment to make an OL Daily post. Uh, but, you know, but, you know the, the bulk of the cost of producing OL Daily is mine. But NRC does support it to some degree. So in OL Daily, I will not make statements that support one political party or another. I'm still, I'm still as, as you know, a huge range for opinion. So it, it's pretty free. All right, well, I am going to need to uh, wrap this up in a bit. Uh, any thoughts before we click the exit button? Just nice uh, to meet everybody. Um, despite all the interruptions I've had, uh, I'm uh, glad to hang out and I'll surely be hanging out in the future, especially come September when uh, I'm, I'm a lot more free. Hope to see you again. Great to see you again, Mike. EFL Bridges is coming to life again and enjoy your face to face hanging out. Yeah. Thanks Good a lot. Guys. Thanks a lot. I hope I didn't monopolize things. It wasn't my intent. I actually intended to come in and listen. And just... <laughs> Your audio on my radio station. <laughs> <laughs> Please do give Wiki to speech a try. I'll, I'll update it with all of the other uh, additions from, uh, I didn't capture everything, obviously, but it'll be a quick summary. And uh, and I will shoot you, John, time. the entire chat log. Oh, you want to send that to me? Sure. Uh, I mean, uh, you, yeah, you can do whatever you want with it, but you said you had lost part of the chat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe just post it somewhere. That okay, good. Yeah, can you post it in Google Plus, I wonder? Yeah, post, take it, actually, hang on. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, well, yeah, I can do this. Hang on. Oh, but I only have the chat log from when I started, so you'll have to do this. But take the chat log and post it as a comment underneath the uh, underneath the Google Plus page for this particular hangout, huh? Okay, I'm Skyping it to myself now. <laughs> Which Skyping I have to say... <laughs> Skype, Skype is the biggest loser in this whole thing because I've already cut my Skype. You know, I used to pay Skype 30 bucks a month for various services, and with Hangout, I'm down to 10 a month and may go lower. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Oh, John, maybe you know the answer to this question. So is there a free international texting app that I can use? My daughter's going to be going to Italy and study there. We want a free app that will go Not. between our phones. There's yeah. one out of Korea that may oh, work. Cacao Korea, Talk. of course. CalTalk? Cacao. I'll put this in the Okay, thanks. Chat. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, 
this, this is one of the most valuable things I, I'm getting out of this whole EduMOOC thing is is new tools. Poplet was entirely new to me, and and you know here I'm I I built stuff with it. it you, you just you get these tools and you pick them up so fast and you know they're you can really be productive. Yeah, and then it got broken because of you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this you morning know, the Twitter. Jeff says we got to keep trying until we. Yeah. Bust if you're not breaking something, you're not trying hard enough. <laughs> That's right, because there I noticed on my Twitter feed this morning the poplet says we're back up. We're at four hundred percent now, and I thought of you, John. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks very much, anyway, all. This has been a great MOOCast. Uh, <laughs> enjoy Never your week, and uh, I'll be here next week hanging out. All right. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.